So right. I'm here at uh, Token 2049 with Michael Wellen from Open Zeppelin. Let's start with maybe just what you've been up to since last time we met. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's only been like eight months or seven months, but yeah, a lot's happened. We've had a lot of really successful launches with new projects. We started to take a model that really worked, the Open Zeppelin Contracts Library. It's something we built in our early in 2016. It's now a standard across the whole ecosystem. You see every Solidity project using it. And now we're trying to go to new ecosystems and offer something similar and say, hey, we'll partner with you, we'll build something up, you know, we'll, we'll make what was special there with Open Zeppelin, but bring it into a new ecosystem that really needs that at the ground floor. So one example of this is Arbitrum Stylus. Stylus is a new programming language that Arbitrum is going out with on their rollups, and we partner with them to build a standard library that should be having its first release after its initial audit in the next couple of weeks. And uh, we're very excited about that. Arbitrum is one of the biggest roll-up ecosystems, and we're, we're excited to see uh, new alternatives to Solidity after you know everyone still complains about Solidity, like it's the JavaScript of the Web3 ecosystem. Now we get to actually see some real attempts to see if we can do better. From the Open Zeppelin side, there's, there's multiple languages now to support, right? Just go into it, what are the challenges? Challenges, what are what are you thinking about? I mean, I think the challenges are all these frameworks have very new, interesting ways of building the same thing we're used to in Solidity. So, for example, with Stylus, when we were initially building out that library, we learned that there wasn't actually a constructor built in by default. So we actually had to build a constructor ourselves for doing some of the things that are normal development patterns in Solidity. Gotcha. Uh, and then at the same time, when we talked to the Stylus team at Offchain Labs, they're like, well, actually, we are going to eventually build a con constructor into the language and uh, eventually that might not be necessary. So we have to find this middle ground and we're so early that some of the things we build might eventually become built-in features. Gotcha. So we have to potentially plan for that to not be necessary going forward. And then other times, like, yeah, we're just, we're building an ecosystem where a lot of the, the infrastructure is new or hasn't yet been created. So we have to decide what are we gonna build for the long term and what are we building kind of as a stopgap just to get this ecosystem in our own library up and running. Like another example of that is figuring out like what is the most gas efficient thing to build in Silas. We're doing a lot of benchmarking, figuring out ways that it's gonna build. Generally, we're just building on something that's so new that the foundations are still shifting. Whereas like Solidity is fairly standardized at this point. It still comes out with new improvements, but the patterns are pretty well established. Everyone knows how to build an ERC-20, a 721. Yeah. Whereas with Stylus, there's still a lot of new ideas to think about and new ways to do it. Not necessarily doing it the same way you would have done it in Solidity. There's actually probably better ways to do it that we have to think about given this new paradigm. So like, yeah, we're trying to kind of copy paste the same approach as the Open Stepin library, but we have to rethink every single step in case there's opportunities we might be missing otherwise. Like this is going to take a lot of work from your yeah. end. And what, what makes you want to prioritize Stylus so so much. I mean, a couple of things. I think one, it's like it's the biggest rollup ecosystem out there in terms of TVL. Uh, they're also expanding more with Orbit chains, so we expect there to be a large market for it. We really like the Arbitrum and Offchain Labs team. Like they're very sharp, they're very good at executing, and we have to work very closely with them uh, as we build out the library because we have to be in lockstep. And they're ultimately the ones funding it, of course. So they have some. Uh, leeway over what we build, but they give us a lot of freedom. And at the same time, we, we have to keep on track of like, you know, what's coming out with Offchain Labs, what are new things are going to change in Stylus. And yeah, at the end of the day, we want to build where we think there's the best success for there to be long-term uh, viability. And, you know, everything the Arbitrum team has built so far has gotten lots of adoption. It has gotten out there. And it's also been taking security pretty seriously, which obviously we care about. So yeah. uh, we are also looking to build other ecosystems like Axlar. We're partnering with them to build more cross-chain standards, okay. uh, both as part of our library and then uh, just making it easier for people to build it by default. You know, the same way they use our ERC-20 and they just pump something out. They don't have to reinvent the wheel. We're trying to do the same for cross-chain, which yeah. is difficult. There's a lot of different vendors doing cross-chain. Axelar is probably and hopefully the first of many, but uh, that's another thing we're really excited about. So the idea is just find areas where obviously there's an ecosystem need and someone's trying to solve it and we have a place where we can help them solve it and build something that, again, is still at the end of the day, it's gonna be an open source library that other people can contribute to and that we have an active community that we can get feedback from. Yeah. So you're looking at things that are established and also things that will be relevant a few well, years from now. And let's say this coming from, from reputable teams, potentially yeah. established teams, but like potentially still something that's new and there is some risk involved because uh, you know if we waited for a project to become established enough, they're probably going to already have to build a library at some point. So there's a balancing act of like getting in early, but also managing the risk of making sure this isn't just going to be like a one-off like ecosystem that yeah. scales up and then just goes nowhere. It's a hype. Um, yeah. So yeah, so Arbitrum's an easy one because like it's a new thing, but it's on an established ecosystem. And then I think a lot of others are going to fall suit. So we have some other announcements that'll come out about other ideals we're working on. Um, so yeah, so we're excited about those. But those are some of the, the early uh, examples of kind of our ecosystem initiatives. Okay.
You were talking to me earlier about uh, your some work you've been doing for DAOs, and yes. maybe you can just like tell the audience of uh, what Open Zeppelin has to do with DAO. Some interesting uh, facts about what you've achieved. <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, we have a, a very well-known um, standard for DAOs, it opens up in governor contracts. Um, they're based off of the uh, Compound Bravo contracts, and so a mix of either Open Zeppelin or uh, older Bravo is out there for every major DAO. ENS uses us, Arbitrum uses us. Uh, so you're probably talking about $10 billion plus TVL secured either through a treasury or through a roll-up or some ecosystem yeah. that's controlled by governor. So through that, we end up working with a lot of DAOs. We've worked with Compound DAO uh, for the last several years. We do audits of all their protocol upgrades, we review their proposals, uh, we do monitoring for security threats, and uh, generally work with the ecosystem, participate in the forums, kind of do almost virtual CISO style work for their ecosystem wherever we can. Okay. Um, and then more recently, Arbitrum DAO as well, which is another example. Our, our team's working on the Stylus library, and then we've also reviewed upgrades such as the Stylus upgrade that, that activated it on mainnet very recently. So. Uh, including also an upgrade to their governor contracts that we reviewed and basically did an audit for. You're so, everywhere. <laughs> yeah, so we try to do a little bit of everything uh, where it makes the most sense. Um, and then very recently, like also looking at what are the challenges for DAOs. Like, so Compound had a recent is incident where someone tried to buy up a lot of tokens and uh, kind of push through proposals to the DAO uh, through a, a delegate called Humpty. So luckily there was a community response to that that resolved it for the meantime, but it kind of was a wake up call so we're trying to work more with DAOs to help them be forward thinking. Hey, if you you know have a bunch of tokens that you've distributed, keep an eye on it, keep an eye on the delegations. Uh, we built monitoring solutions to that effect, uh, and just trying to like you know keep an eye on that, making sure that like you know a decentralized system means that anyone can come in and propose things. And uh, is there any due diligence? Are you keeping an eye on that? You can build as much code as you want, but like are you able to actually trust the people that have governance power and uh, any of the people that can come into that ecosystem from outside? So. Taking a detailed look at that, like what was it? You gave a, you gave an incident alert to, to the DAO team and yes. they resolved it before anything happened or? Well, okay, so here's how it worked actually. We were uh, giving out an alert a couple of months in advance of the actual incident coming down. So we were like, hey, we, we see uh, someone buying up a lot of comp tokens and delegating them, which means to say they're, they're setting them aside for governance. And we saw large numbers, up to 300, 400K worth of comp being delegated in this fashion, which is up to the threshold needing to submit a proposal. So we're like, what's going on here? They haven't been identified, they haven't been voting. Maybe there's a potential that someone is holding this back for a governance attack. And then at the same time, there was a delegate called Humpty that was submitting proposals to allocate comp to a stake kind of comp feature they had set up. A lot of people were like, we don't really like this, we're not interested, but he kept submitting proposals and they kept getting voted down. The same proposal. Same proposal. Uh, he made adjustments here and there, but it yeah. was essentially still the same structure. And then only at the third one, at the very last minute, I think they had like 600K worth of votes that had come out against it almost not in favor, and at the very last minute before the vote's about to close, they submit like 680 comp worth of vote, all from all these random delegations that had been sitting there silently for just uh, months on end. Yeah. And so that created a big uh, a storm of controversy. A lot of people were not very happy about this because it was very underhanded. They had actually set up a proposal to move governance from the governor contracts to the community multi-sig, kind of like declaring martial law, um, <laughs> if that proposal wasn't uh, canceled. And eventually there was kind of a negotiated settlement. The community agreed that we're gonna pursue this state comp initiative, but like in our own way. And Humpty agreed to cancel the proposal and then the multi-sig kind of martial law proposal got canceled. Um, and since then, a lot of improvements have been implemented. There's gonna be a plan to update the governor to include like quorum protection. So if someone ever tried to do that again, if someone submitted a lot of votes last minute that achieves quorum, there'd be an extension of a couple of days to the proposal vote. So uh, people have a chance to respond. Because uh, there were additional votes that could have been marshaled that people knew yeah. that that was potentially going to happen. Uh, and then other ideas are putting in a multi-sig for now that could veto proposals that are passed in that manner. Um, but that has a six month expiration, so hopefully it expires once governance has become more secure. Uh, and in general, just hopefully having more vigilance in the community, people being more aware of this possibility. Uh, and other DAOs doing the same thing. ENS DAO has also faced potential issues like this as so they've implemented a similar multi-sig style feature. Yeah. Uh, and now Arbitrum DAO is also looking at uh, implementing a staked comp feature where delegates are actually gonna be, basically the idea is right now tokens can either be used for governance or they could be put into something that's yield bearing and earn money. So if you delegate them in governance, you might be losing potential value uh, that you could be in like a DeFi vault. So the idea is combine them, allow a DeFi vault to exist where people could put up their comp and vote, 
but then also earn yield on it at the same time. And so people essentially can earn money while they're also participating in governance. And so you can align incentives. So Arbitrum and Compound are both exploring that. There's a solution by Tally that Arbitrum is going to be trying to implement, but there's also a lot of other examples out there of people trying to iterate on this sort of idea. So I think it's going to be interesting for governance in the next year where people try to figure out how to align incentives of delegates who essentially are doing governance for free and uh, the rest of the community and making sure that that never gets misaligned. Okay, that's a really interesting case study and I think it's nice to see how these kind of stress test events lead to more resolution within the space. And, yeah. yep. and hopefully stress robot. testing without breaking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think they got lucky in this yes. space, right? Yeah. It all worked out, but I think... Uh, they could have listened earlier. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah. And that and we were also learning that like, for Open Zeppelin, we need to be more involved in governance to like, push these things, yeah. not just advising, but also being active in that decision. We've started up a delegate profile in Compound, so we're actually going to start voting more actively ourselves, uh, separate from our security team. So there's a wall of separation yeah. from the people that audit and the people that vote. We realize that governance is going to need more active subject matter experts that essentially vote and participate, so we're trying to also be part of that as well. Thanks a lot for talking to us, and uh, it's been really interesting seeing basically Open Zeppelin have such a big role in the space without really getting the credit for it. <laughs> you continue to be like the, the knights in shining armor in the shadows. <laughs> we, we enjoy it, and uh, yeah, at the end of the day, the, a big part of the ecosystem initiative is to do that, but also build funding to make it sustainable. And yeah, I think we're, we're excited to continue to do it and enjoy everyone that we get to talk to in the space. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me.